Hey guys, this is Rob from Howcast Gaming. We're at the 2011 New York Comic Con and we're going to be checking out some of the new upcoming games coming out this fall and spring. Hey guys, I'm here with Chris from Radical. We're talking about Prototype 2 uh, at Comic Con, New York City Comic Con. So, um, Chris, yeah. one of the big aspects of Prototype 1 was its large and fairly accurate representation of New York City. Right. What about that has either uh, changed or stayed the same regarding you know New York and Prototype 2? Yeah, uh, where, where we are now is 14 months after the events of Prototype 1. And so now New York City basically is being post, it's now post-apocalyptic. After the, after the nuclear bomb went off, things have gone very badly. And so the Black Watch, the, the military organization, have divided up this new city that we call NYZ into three distinct zones. And so each zone, Radical are basically making feel very, very different, a very, very look, different look and feel. The way people are and react and the kind of, the, what people are doing on the streets is very different from one zone to the other. And so we wanted to really have three very unique feeling big open world spaces that you could play in. So one of the aspects of Prototype 1 was interaction with the crowds, both right. for like help. Now yeah. you're saying that this is um, very much post-apocalyptic. Has that sort of interaction changed in any way now that the population might have changed? Absolutely. There's all kinds of interesting things that the, the civilians, uh, who some of, some of whom are infected, are doing. And also the Black Watch and the military now are really running, running the show in some of the zones, like the green zone and the yellow zone. And so one of the things we want to really amp up in the sequel is that when you shapeshift into other kinds of characters, when you transform your body as James Heller into other characters, for example, a Black Watch agent, as you walk down the street, you'll actually see everyone will start to like part like the Red Sea because they're terrified of Black Watch. And so you can kind of feel like a real you know, badass that way. So they will, the crowd will react to you based on how you look as well. Um, and we've also got the different zones have different kind of actions happening. You know, we have the red zone, which pretty much is Alex Mercer's, you know, headquarters. That's very much, uh, if, you, if, you, if you send in the military there, they won't survive. And so what happens there, we haven't really revealed that yet, but it's pretty crazy in that zone. That's towards the end of the game somewhat. So it's very, very different based on where you are. We want to really make sure we had crazy ambience as well. Like we've got infected zombies on taxis basically smashing the windows in as the car's flying along and they hurl off the top of it. We've got guys, dumpster divers. You know, and anyone's looking for ways to survive and you can see that on the streets of NYZ. Which, which of those editions would you say you're, you're most excited about it? It's your personal favorite. Well, actually for me, uh, one of the coolest things is in terms of interacting with people, in the first game, as Alex Mercer, when you would pick up someone, we didn't really give you any choice, but you had to kill that person. You had to throw them or consume them. And had James Heller is a different kind of guy. You now have the ability to actually put them nicely back down on the ground, which means that you can be a nice guy or you can be an even more twisted person, pick them up, terrorize them, go up skyscrapers, put them down, and then basically they think they're safe, grab them and go for, for another ride. So you can, you can play, basically play it many different ways, but you can also, by putting things down, you can also put cars down and objects down, so you can begin to stack things into really cool, interesting, stackable columns and just mess around like it's a real sandbox. Sounds great. Uh, so talk to me a little bit about uh, traversal. Like with Prototype 1, you had such a large world and a big aspect of that was getting around. Are there any sort of uh, additions or changes to how you'd be getting around in Prototype 2? Yeah, um, you know, pr Prototype was kind of famous for its over-the-top parkour. You know, it's like, it's like, um, like we basically locom you can locomote across the, across the entire zone very quickly. Um, you can ob obviously you could glide in the first one. And one of, the, one of the pieces of feedback from our fans on the first game was they wanted to have more of an enhanced way to glide. And everyone loves Superman. And so you can actually now really put a lot of points and experience points into that gliding power so you can do much longer glides across the world. And so you can do, start to do things like in our hunting mechanic where you can hunt down targets, you can kind of circle like, like an eagle above like a Blackwatch agent, send out your hunting pulse and see where they are in the crowd and then dive down and basically take them out. So it's, uh, it's pretty cool. So you mentioned experience points. Now, uh, what kind of changes can we look forward to in terms of leveling up or like almost the RPG element of the game? Right. 
Um, this is an aspect that's a, very important to Radical. We want, by the end of the game, we want the player to feel that their prototype is very different from their friends. And as you put points, or you know, evolution points, into your favorite, say, arm power, like a, the blade arm, as you level it up and you use it more, you'll actually see it get bigger and bigger and actually change shape. And because Heller is a military guy, the ultimate form of it actually kind of resembles a cool military knife by the end. It's very cool. Um, and so we want to have that visual payoff um, as well as, you know, obviously want to make sure that when we're giving you these powers, we're properly matching the powers to the enemies. And so there's also a, a sense of the right power for the right job, the right tool for the right job as an improvement on prototype one where one power could almost do everything. And so we're trying to bring more of a, more of a purpose and a, almost a class system to the kind of weapon arms that you have. So it's, uh, yeah, we're very excited. And so when can we expect to get our hands on prototype two? Yeah, uh, we're actually launching April of next year, April 24 for Xbox uh, 360, PS3 and PC. We're super excited. We're showing an early code here today. The reaction's been insane. Uh, so we can't wait to show more of it. Great. Well, thank you very much. It's been great. I'm really looking forward to the game. Thank you. Thanks.